Last time on Bugbusters, the lakeside town of Mountain View, California was attacked by killer giant cockroaches, and it was up to one eccentric exterminator to stop them. Oh wait, I'm sorry, that was that was Bugbusters Singular, a 1998 comedy horror film starring Randy Quaid. Oh, it's a it's a common mistake. But this time for Bugbusters, plural, we'll be looking at the snipers bugs. And that's all I have for the funny intro, so let's go bust some bugs like General George S. Merlin from the hit movie Bugbuster. Let's get ready to bumble. The first bug is from the general sniper page of the wiki, but it's a Huntsman exclusive bug, so I don't really know why it's there and not on the Huntsman page, but whatever, it's fine. So, while having the Huntsman or the Fortified compound equipped, it is still possible to use a skewer taunt while stunned. The taunt's animation won't be played, but the sniper will still say the taunt's voice line and can still kill a nearby enemy by moving the camera towards them before taunting. And this is a super old one, it probably goes back to when the Huntsman came out. And of course, it is still true. If you're stunned, you can still activate the taunt, and even use that to reverse kill the other taunting Huntsman sniper that skewered you. I did also try this with the Ubersaw stun, but that one seems to pass too quickly. But you can activate it when stunned by the Supernova power-up and manpower, so uh, that's a secret strat there. Now this next one is a sniper bug that's currently not listed anywhere, but it's one that I discovered in the Soldier Bugs video, so I figured I should talk about it here too. None of Sniper's primary weapons have a reload sound from the perspective of other players. As far as I'm currently aware, of all the weapons in the game, this is only true for any non-original Soldier primary and all of Sniper's primaries. This even includes the Huntsman, which is also completely silent when reloading. For the sniper rifle, if the player scopes in and pauses their game, the zoom display is removed, allowing the player to see as if they weren't scoped while retaining their zoom and their charge. Since the game is paused, the player is obviously unable to shoot or look around during this time. Uh, yeah, pausing their game. I don't think I've ever heard someone call bringing up the menu pausing the game, but uh, I, I was pretty sure that was what this meant. But you actually can pause TF2. If SV pausable is set to 1, and then you type pause in the console, uh, it pauses the game. But it does not get rid of the zoom display, it just kind of makes it so that everything stops. So pretty clearly they did mean bringing up the menu, which does get rid of the tunnel vision in the background, but who calls that pausing? For the Huntsman, the first bug says that although going underwater with a lit arrow will visibly extinguish it, it is still considered lit and capable of setting enemies on fire. And this is probably one of the most easily verifiably false bugs there is. All you need is a lit arrow and some water, and no, it does not visibly extinguish. Uh, sure, it breaks the laws of nature, but you can have a burning arrow underwater, and once you fire it outside of the water, it will still light people on fire. Lighting a Huntsman arrow will change its damage type from bullet to fire. Now, this is true, but it's also false, kinda. Well, not so much false, but there is more to it than what the bug says. As we can see here, a burning arrow from the Huntsman is in fact resisted by the Vaccinator's fire shield. However, that burning arrow is also still resisted by the Vaccinator's bullet shield. Because yes, by default, the Huntsman arrows are still considered bullets. But this does mean that the Huntsman doesn't change damage type, but instead gains the fire type as well. And because it has two damage types, it also means it can become double resisted. For example, with both bullet and fire shields from the Vaccinator, the Huntsman's damage can be reduced by 75% twice meaning a fully charged body shot goes from dealing 120 damage to only dealing 8 damage. And the same thing can actually happen with Pyro's flare guns, because for some reason flares are considered both bullet and fire damage as well. Not really sure why for that one, but that is the case. But anyway, because the Huntsman isn't changing types and instead is gaining the fire type like it should, I don't really think that's a bug. With a lit arrow, the fire particle stays when performing special taunts. And yeah, if your arrow is lit and you activate a special taunt, you'll have this little wisp of fire following your movements. This does seem to happen with the vast majority of special taunts, but for the Didgeridrongo it did not show up at all. Not really sure why. It's also kind of interesting that the Huntsman takes like a second to relight after a taunt is over. This is only a visual thing though, it is still always on fire. Pressing the primary and secondary fire at the same time causes the animation of letting go of the arrow without firing to play on repeat. Of course, normally the primary fire draws the arrow and the secondary fire cancels it, but if they're both pressed at the same time, it causes the animation to instantly start from the drawn state and just cancel the animation. But unlike what the description says, the animation does not play on repeat even if you're constantly holding down both buttons. 
It'll only do this once if you're holding both of them down, but if you want to keep doing it, you can just keep clicking both at the same time, over and over, and you'll cause the animation to repeat like that over and over. Uh, there's no practical use to that, but you could do it, I guess. For the Sydney Sleeper, unscoped shots can extinguish burning teammates. Both scoped and unscoped shots from the Sleeper can in fact extinguish your teammates. And the only reason that this would probably be considered a bug is because the patch notes from Meet Your Match, when this ability was added, specifically said scope shots now extinguish teammates. Yet, unscoped shots do the same thing. But does that really matter? I mean, if this really was a bug, would anybody actually want it fixed? It is true that unscoped shots can extinguish teammates, but uh, well, let's call that a feature. The attribute no headshots is incorrectly listed, as a Sydney Sleeper can deal mini crits headshot damage. I mean, yeah, not so much a bug as weird wording for the description that probably should be changed, but since 2018, the Sydney Sleeper can in fact deal mini crit damage on headshot. In MVM, the explosive headshot upgrade with the Sleeper can still damage enemies around the target, even if the target is uber-charged. And this bug actually has a link to a video by Sig Seg, and while that video is from 2015, all we have to do to see if it's still true is to just hop in an MVM mission and try it out. And surely enough, headshotting an uber-charged target with the Sydney Sleeper will still cause the explosive headshot to go off. And that effect does not seem to apply to the other sniper rifles. And according to the description of Sig Seg's video, the Sydney Sleeper's ability to trigger explosive headshots is so poorly coded that it's broken in just about every way you can imagine. And according to him, it seems to be caused by the explosive headshots repurposing bleed damage. So that's pretty interesting. When firing under the effects of damage recoil, the Machina may appear to fire two bullets. One bullet fired towards the intended target, and the other firing a few degrees higher at a diagonal angle. This may be caused by the Machina's particle effect, and the second shot deals no damage and costs no ammo. And yeah, this is a common one, and if you've ever used the Machina at all, you've probably seen it. So if you're flinching from damage while firing the Machina, there's a decent chance that it fires two tracer rounds. But this does mainly seem to happen when you're taking recoil damage while also moving your mouse when you fire. Flinching while holding still didn't seem to cause the effect. And a secondary part of this bug does also say it can occur while standing on a moving object like a payload cart, but when I tested it, it didn't seem to happen. I wouldn't doubt that it probably could, but it didn't happen for me. In the event of a penetration kill killing more than two players at once, the fanfare sound effect will stack with each additional kill. Alright, this is a sound-based bug, and it is a true one, so, uh, so here's your sound warning. I'm gonna show it with two kills, six kills, and then 16 kills, so, uh, it's gonna get pretty loud. What? I can't hear anything anymore! Uh, the next one says that by by firing by, by firing a fully charged shot when behind a teammate, the Machina incorrectly registers a penetration kill when killing an enemy player. The unique penetration kill icon is shown, and the sound effect is played for everyone on the server. So in TF2, most hitscan weapons, like the SMG for example, don't actually go through your teammates. However, the sniper's primaries are the exception, and firing a fully charged Machina shot through your teammate will actually contribute to a penetration kill. Though of course, the only impact this has is the kill icon and the fanfare, and that's about it. For the Hitman's Heatmaker, if one activates focus and picks up a rifle from the ground, it is possible to enter the focus state while wielding any primary. However, getting kills or assists with any other primary weapon does not build the focus. And while picking up a bow or the classic gives the lightning effects, it does not affect its charge or its shots whatsoever. So this means if you activate focus and pick up another sniper rifle from the ground, you'll retain the faster charging speed and no unscoping from the Heatmaker's focus without the Heatmaker's body shot penalty. However, like it says, you can't extend the focus by getting kills or assists like you would with the Heatmaker. And also like the bug description says, it unfortunately has no impact on the Huntsman or the Classic. But just take a second here to look at how good this would be with the Bizarre Bargain. It's disgusting. Now, this next one for the Heatmaker has actually since been removed from the wiki, and it just said, Activate focus at any time. Weird way to say it, but I'm actually not totally convinced it's not a bug. Yes, you can activate the Hitman's Heatmaker's focus at any charge amount, which is something completely unique to the Heatmaker, and I'm sure a lot of people just assumed it was a feature. Now, when the weapon came out, focus was activated automatically on the first shot you fired when it was full. They changed that in the Love and War update, and in the patch notes, it said, quote, with the Hitman's Heatmaker, pressing Reload now activates focus when it's full. 
they have definitely made mistakes in patch notes before, but there's really no ambiguity as to what this means. It says it when it's full. I mean, this is kind of like the sleeper extinguishing on no scope. Is that a bug? Is it a feature? See, uh, I guess only Valve knows for sure. The classic's laser sight visual that is triggered upon charging a shot is an independent entity that is not fully linked to the rifle itself, and as a result has a delayed reaction time to the player's actions. And yeah, this is another one that if you've ever used this weapon, then you've seen it happen. The laser sight gets misaligned all the time. And this can actually happen in the third person view too, though it is a little bit less noticeable. When Jurati is thrown at a sentry buster, the bomb part of the model will not be tinted yellow, only the legs will be tinted. And the best way to test this is just go into Maniverse Machine, throw Jurati at a sentry buster, and we will see that the legs are coated, but the big bomb on top is not. And oddly, the A-Post bug for Jurati is actually not listed on the Jurati's page. So on the off chance you don't know how to do it, all you need to do is die holding Jurati, respawn, throw your Jurati while continuing to hold down the left click, and then pick up the previously dropped Jurati. And then after you do that, you'll be in the A-Pose, and it'll be funny and everyone will laugh. And to fix it, you just change weapons. And that was it for Jurati, but its reskin in the self-aware beauty mark has more bugs. And the first one says that oftentimes, when using an equipable taunt while holding the self-aware beauty mark, will cause the bread monster inside the jar to stop moving. And this is essentially the same bug we saw with the mutated milk. And just like with that weapon, while the monster does always seem to stop moving after taunting, it will also always begin to move again after a few seconds without the need to switch weapons. So it's kind of partially true. And in more similarities to the mutated milk, the self-aware beauty mark has slightly different physics compared to Jurati, making it fly further when thrown. This is Jurati and the beauty mark being thrown from the same angle, and while the Jurati doesn't connect, the beauty mark does. So technically, it's kind of a direct upgrade. Kinda. If the player switches weapons immediately after the self-aware beauty mark is thrown, the projectile will become Jurati instead. So here's it thrown normally, and here's it thrown when you try to draw a weapon immediately after throwing it. For some reason, it just turns into normal Jurati in the same way that the mutated milk turned into mad milk. Weird. But for a bug the mutated milk doesn't have, the self-aware beauty mark's loadout animation is bugged, being positioned behind the sniper while he holds his hand open. Well, the mutated milk's loadout animation was a little bit bugged, where the scout's hand was inside the jar, but it wasn't like this. It's weird, because the sniper's actually using the proper hand animation, it's just not in his hand. Oh boy, time for my favorite weapon, the Razorback, and its first bug says that dead players can be pinned to broken Razorback gives by arrows. For example, if a sniper is killed by the Huntsman quickly after having his Razorback broken, he'll be pinned to where the Gibbs are at the time and end up dangling midair. And that sounds really cool, and we tried it over and over and over, but we couldn't get it to happen. Maybe the timing has to be like super ultra precise, but look at this one, the arrow goes right through the Razorback piece. I mean this one would have looked great on the thumbnail, and uh, I wish it was true, but not only could I not recreate it, but I couldn't even find any pictures of it online. And if I look back on the edit history of the Razorback page, this one goes all the way back to 2011, and the only note is, a bug I found some time ago. So yeah, based on all that, I'm gonna say this one probably isn't true, or at least it isn't true anymore. But if you could recreate it, let me know. The Razorback does not appear when inspecting it from the backpack menu. It in fact does not, and I'll save us the trouble of seeing this later on by mentioning this also applies to the Darwin's Danger Shield and the Cozy Camper as well. It will also not show up. But the Razorback is also just so ashamed of its own existence, that when equipped, it won't even show up on the sniper in the loadout menu. It's just not there. For the Darwin's Danger Shield, this one just says, Slow tail movement in loadout menu. Well, that's very blunt, but uh, it's not wrong. In the loadout menu, when you spin your character, the tail on the Danger Shield will move very slowly back to its original position. In some cases, when in the loadout screen, the Jurati attached to the Cozy Camper may become invisible when seen from an angle when rotated behind. I feel like that was worded kind of weirdly, but uh, maybe not totally invisible, but in the loadout screen you can see part of the Jurati is completely see-through. You can see the back of the sniper rifle through the Jurati as if it wasn't there. So I guess that kind of counts, but when viewed in the actual game, it does seem to look totally normal from that angle. The backpack icon for the Cozy Camper still shows the original green version of the item as opposed to the new one. Now, the Cozy Camper was never actually green in-game, 
but you can't see it green in the original Steam Workshop page. For the Cleaner's Carbine, this bug says that when viewed in world view, the muzzle flash appears misaligned with the barrel. So this would be from the perspective of other players, and uh, it looks fine to me. Uh, I checked it from the side, I checked it from the front, I checked from the top of the sniper's head, and it all looks normal to me. And because Sniper has no known melee bugs, we could go straight to achievement bugs. And the first one says that the Dead Reckoning achievement can be earned by killing any enemy player after your own death, not just with a Huntsman arrow. And then it goes on to say that this achievement can be earned by firing any sniper rifle at the exact same moment an enemy sniper fires back, finishing off an enemy soldier or demo who dies to their own explosive self-damage with the same rocket, grenade, or sticky that kills you, or killing an enemy with bleed damage from the Trial Wind Shiv. So normally Dead Reckoning is earned for killing an enemy with an arrow after you die. But like the description says, you can get it with a bleed kill from the Trialman Shiv after you've been killed. However, I did not have the same luck when it came to finishing off soldiers and Delmen with their own explosives. It says that they die to their own explosive and it counts as finishing them off, you should be able to get the achievement. But I tried with rockets, grenades, and stickies, and not one of them earned it. And the last way it says you could get it is by firing a sniper rifle at the exact same moment an enemy sniper fires back. And that one did not seem to be true either. In fact, I'm relatively positive that two players cannot kill each other simultaneously with bullet-based weapons. I'm pretty sure when something like that happens, one will always count first. And in case you didn't think these two snipers were firing at the exact same time, you can actually see blood show up on the other sniper's face where he seemingly would have been hit if the shot had actually gone off. But it only counted for one of the snipers, so only one of them died. I don't really know how it determines that, so that might be something interesting to test in a future video. But uh, anyway, only the shiv will count for this one. If Durrani is used to assist in the killing of a spy by another sniper using a melee weapon, then the assist kill contributes to the Kook the Spook achievement. And Kook the Spook is normally earned for killing 10 spies with your Kukri. This alt account here has the achievement at 9 out of 10, but the Durrani assist does not contribute to it. And just to prove that it was at 9 out of 10, the next direct kill does grant the achievement. So yeah, that one's busted. The last wave in Be Polite achievements can be earned simultaneously while taunting with the Kukri active. The last wave is normally earned for providing an enemy with a freeze cam of you waving to them, meaning the sniper primary taunt, and Be Polite is normally earned for providing an enemy with a freeze cam of you doffing your hat, meaning taunting with a melee weapon. But for some reason, they could both be earned by just doing the melee taunt. The Shoot the Breeze achievement can be earned by activating the feigned death of a spy's dead ringer, and Shoot the Breeze is normally earned for killing a fully invisible spy with a single hit. But no, the dead ringer's feign does not contribute to it. Even if you're using a knife that lowers Spy's health to where a fully charged headshot will kill him with the Dead Ringer active, that won't count either, so yeah, that one's busted too. And our final bug says that the achievement Flight Cancelled cannot be earned with the Hitman's Heatmaker. And Flight Cancelled is normally earned for killing 25 parachuting players with a critical headshot. But unlike what it says, the Hitman's Heatmaker does contribute to it, meaning it can be earned with that weapon. In fact, the only sniper primary that doesn't contribute to this one is the Sydney Sleeper because it's only mini crits on headshots where full crits are required. I mean, even the Huntsman can do it. So yeah, that one is also busted too. And that was it for sniper bugs. Considering how simple most of sniper's weapons tend to be stat-wise, it does make sense that he was ultimately not a very buggy class. In fact, I might go so far as to say he's probably the least buggy class so far. I mean, sure, Medic's video was the shortest, but he also has way less weapons, so you kinda have to factor that in there too. But anyway, next time I have the two classes that I've been putting off, which are Pyro and Engineer, because those videos are gonna be... Those videos those are gonna be long videos. I mean, Engineer also doesn't have that many weapons, but they still got all the buildings and all that stuff, and it's just a lot to go over. So, uh, maybe, maybe we could make a detour and do map bugs or something, but, uh... uh it's up to you, what do you guys wanna see? But yeah, as usual, thanks for watching, and a special thanks to my patrons like Varric, Captain Forex, Egox, Colonel, Probably Vinegar, Caponicus, Kelso the Pirate, Pilsman's Fox, Kyber96, Scout with a Name, Glump, Salt God, Lobby, Tope, Time Consuming, Steel Frog, Nolan46, and Slemmy. Alright, okay, peace out, dogs. Yeah.